Hi everyone, this is Mrs. GA, and today we're going to learn about base e functions and then some other exponential formulas. Um, so first I do have a warm-up for you guys. You will need your scientific calculator um, because you're going to be completing the t-chart for f of x equals e to the power of x. Um, e is a button that is on your calculator, so see if you can find it to um, complete the warm-up. Uh, when you're ready to check your answers, just hit play. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so hopefully you found that E button on your scientific calculator, and if you round to the nearest hundreds, here's what you should have gotten. Um, so you can plot those points or do your best to estimate, and you can see that we do have an exponential growth function. Um, it just has a base of E. So E represents um, an irrational number, it's 2.718, so on and so forth. Um, again, it's irrational, meaning it continues forever. Um, so E is, is kind of like pi. Um, it's a number that is so useful that we defined it with a variable. Um, so anytime you see E, know that it is approximately 2.7. And this is um, a base uh, for an exponential function that we'll use for what's called um, continuous growth. So you can see it is a growth function, um, but it has a really um, special application. So E is something that we're going to be working with today. And this is the parent function that we'll be using to help us graph um, our transformed functions. All right, so we're going to start um, by graphing uh, the following base e functions using our transformation rules. And you can see that I've already gone in here and I've um, sketched out the parent function from the warm-up for each of these. Um, so we can go in and start by um, just looking straight for the uh, transformations. So in this first one, we can see that it is the base e function, but then we see that plus 2 at the end. And that plus 2, um, since it's added and it's not added to x, we know that this is a vertical shift. So it's a vertical shift, and that will move our graph up 2. So we're simply going to take the points that we have from our parent function and shift them all up 2. And again, we are kind of approximating for a lot of these because um, they are decimals, but it does give us a really good, uh, pretty accurate graph. Um, so just like any other parent function for our exponential, we can see our original asymptote was at y equals 0, but this one has shifted up 2. So we can see that our asymptote has also shifted up 2. So this is our horizontal asymptote. As you can see, our graph gets really close to y equals 2, but not quite. Um, it never quite reaches it. So our domain, just like any other exponential function, is negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, since our graph was shifted up 2, we can see that our range is everything 2 and above. But again, 2 is not included, so 2 to positive infinity. And then our horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2. Again, usually it's at y equals 0. That's where it starts for the parent function. But we did have a vertical shift, which also shifts our horizontal asymptote in the same way. All right, let's look at example b. So here we have two different um, transformations. We do need to make sure that we do anything involving multiplication first. So we do need to take care of this reflection first. So remember, negative reflects. So this is going to reflect over the x-axis. It's a vertical reflection. So we can do that first. So we're essentially just going to flip all of our points over the x-axis. So we should get something that looks like this. And then 2, 4, 6, 7, just like this. So again, this is just our first step. That's our reflection, so I'm still going to keep it dotted. And then the next transformation we see is that plus 3. So since it's added um, to x, it's horizontal. Remember, it causes a shift or a translation. And these will always move in the opposite direction, you think. So it's actually going to go left 3. So you can take all the points we have from the blue dotted graph and simply shift them all left 3. And you get something that looks like 
this. So you'll notice that since our graph wasn't shifted up or down, our horizontal asymptote is still at y equals zero despite the reflection and despite the horizontal shift. So we can fill out the rest of the information. Our domain is all real numbers, so negative infinity to positive infinity. Here, our range is everything below zero. So remember, always start with the lowest value. So it's negative infinity to zero. And our horizontal asymptote uh, was unchanged from our parent function because uh, there was no vertical shift. All right, let's look at this last one. So again, we always start with any transformation involving multiplication. So this 2 is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, which means all of our y values will double. And it's the y values because it's vertical. So I can see that this first point will double. Well, it doesn't look like it changes much when it doubles, but do your best for those first two. 1 doubles to 2. This will double up to about here. And then if we double this last point, it's going to go off our graph. So this is good enough for our first transformation. Again, I'm going to leave it dotted because we're not done yet. Because uh, we still have that minus 4. So again, since we're subtracting 4 from the entire function, it's going to be vertical. So this is a vertical shift or translation down 4. So we'll take all of the points from our blue graph and we'll do our best to move them all down four. And we get something like this in red. And you can see that our horizontal asymptote was also shifted down four with the rest of our graph. So the domain of this function, just like any other exponential function, is all real numbers. Our range is everything negative four and above. So lowest to highest, negative four to positive infinity. And our asymptote is at y equals negative four. So remember, the asymptote is an equation. So you do need to make sure that they are the, uh, an equation for a horizontal line. All right, so now we're going to talk about some um, useful formulas that involve um, exponential functions. So there's three we're going to be working with today, and one of them does have that base E. So the first one is a simple interest investment. Um, so it looks like this. It's A equals P plus P times R times T. So P is uh, what's called the principal, which means the initial amount that you invest. R is the simple interest rate, and we're going to write that as a decimal, not a percentage. T is the time in years, and then A will be the total that your um, investment is worth after T years. So you can see um, if I invest a certain amount of money for this long, how much money will I have? Um, so compound interest um, is when the bank pays you interest more than once a year. So we call that compounding your interest. So simple interest, you're paid once a year, but compounded, you get paid more. So the formula is a little bit different. It looks A equals P times 1 plus R over N, all to the power of N times T. Um, so here, P again is that principal amount. How much did you start with? R is your interest rate as a decimal. N is the number of times your interest is compounded per year. So it's how many times does the bank look at your um, investment and pay you interest. So you can have a com um, an account that's compounded monthly, so 12 times a year, or maybe daily, so 365 times a year. So it just depends on the account. But N is the number of times it's compounded each year. Um, T is still going to be the time in years that has gone by, and then A will still tell you the total that your investment is now worth after those two years have gone by. Um, so again, they're both to help you see how much money your, your investment is worth after time, but this first one is when you have a simple interest, meaning you're paid interest once a year. This is for compounded interest, which means you're paid 
um, more frequently or your interest is accrued more frequently. And then the last one is um, called the continuously compounded interest formula. So here you'll notice that we have base E. So continuously compounding your interest means essentially you have to kind of imagine a world where every single millisecond of the day your um, investment is earning interest. And so it's essentially instead of being compounded twice a year or maybe 12 times a year or even 365 times a year, it's literally being um, compounded continuously. Um, so for that, we use that base E, which remember we use for continuous growth. So the formula there is A equals P times E to the power of RT. So notice your base E is the only thing with the exponent. So P is still your principal amount. R is still your interest rate. We're going to write that as a decimal. And then T is your time in years. Remember, E is that value, which is approximately 2.7, which we can use our calculator for. All right, so let's give one of these a try together. Um, so for these, we're, the hardest thing I think is going to be figuring out uh, which formula to use. So this person says you invest $3,500 in an account that pays 2% interest compounded continuously. So that's going to be a big hint for us as to which formula we should use. How much will that account be worth after five years? And then about how long would it take for the account to reach the value of $5,000? And we can use Desmos for that part. So let's start by making the model. Again, since it's continuously compounded, we are using this model. A equals P times E to the power of RT. So remember, P is that principal amount, so how much you started your investment with, so 3500 um, R is going to be our interest rate as a decimal, so 0.02 is how you write 2% as a decimal. And um, T is part of our uh, model, so we can plug that in later when we're trying to answer the first question. So here our model is A equals 3,500 times E to the power of 0.02 T. So this is our model, and this model tells us how much our um, account is worth, or the value of the account after t years, which is number of years. So if they want to know how much will that account be worth after five years, we replace t with 5, and we solve for a. So we can say a equals 3,500 times e to the power of 0 0.02 times 5. So this, we can use our scientific calculator to get a decimal approximation. Again, with this, it is very, very important that we are following order of operations. If you type it in exactly how you see it and you're careful with grouping, uh, your, your calculator will always follow order of operations. But it's really important, again, here, that we're raising only e to the power of 0 0.02 times 5. So we multiply these together first. We raise e to that exponent, and then we would multiply it by $3,500. However, again, if you type it in exactly how we see it there, our calculator should give us um, a correct answer. So check that you're getting the same exact answers as I do. Um, it should be 3,868, and then we'll say point, uh, 0.10. We'll round to the nearest hundredths. It was 0 0.098, but that would round up to 0 0.10. And again, we want to do that because this is money, and that's how we round money. So $3,868.10 is how much your account will be worth after five years. Um, now, the next part of this question, they ask, how long would it take for the account to reach a value of $5,000? So they're saying, what is the x value 
because the x value is the time when y equals 5,000. And again, we haven't yet learned how to solve um, an exponential equation like this, so we can use Desmos. So we're going to graph our model on Desmos, this exact model. You'll type this into Desmos, and then you're going to zoom in to find when y is 5,000, and we're looking for the x value. So let's go plug that into Desmos real quick. Okay, so this is the graph that I got. So here's our model. Again, uh, 3,500 times e to the power of 0.02x uh, times x. So again, instead of t, we do need to use x for Desmos. Um, and then it gives you this big function that you need to really zoom in. So look, I found when um, our y value is 5,000. And then you can actually use your cursor to trace along your graph on Desmos and try to get as close as you can to 5,000. Again, it's going to be more of an approximation. I got really close to 5,000. So our x uh, value uh, is, you can see, 17.8. So we can round that up. We'll just say approximately 18. So again, you're, we were f trying to find the x value when y was 5,000. Again, this is more of an approximation. We'll say approximately 18 years. We'll round up for this one to the nearest whole year. So anytime you are trying to solve for the exponent, um, for now we can use Desmos to help us and just trace along your graph until you get really close to the coordinate you're looking for. All right, let's try one more together. This one says you purchase a rare Pokemon card for $125. How much will the card be worth in 12 years if experts predict that the value of the card will increase at 5.2% per year? So this one is um, simple interest investment because you're just gaining or you're getting your interest once per year. So we're going to use that formula A equals P plus P times R times T. So for this one, so for this particular case, um, we know that our P, our principal amount is $125. Um, our interest rate as a decimal is 0 0.052. And then T is part of our function. So our model is A equals 125 plus 125 times 0 0.052 times T. So we could use this model to figure out the value of the card for any T number of years. Um, so in this case, they said how much will the card be worth in 12 years? So we'll replace T with 12. And then we can plug that into our calculator. So 125 plus 125 times 0 0.052 times 12. And we should get an answer of exactly 203. Um, so that would be $203. So if you purchase it for 125 and you hold on to it for 12 years, it will then be worth $203 if you are um, accruing simple interest at 5.2%. All right, here's our last one that we're going to try together. So this one says you invest $12,000 in an account that yields 2% interest compounded monthly. So see, you can see here that it is compounded and it's not compounded continuously. So we're going to use that um, compound interest formula for this one. And it says, how much will the account be worth after 15 years? So first we need to make the model. So this one is A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the power of N T. So we need to fill in P, um, R, and N. And then T is our input. So we can change the number of years um, to find how much the account is worth. So our principal, the amount we started with, was 12,000. Our R value as a decimal is 0 0.02. And since it says compounded monthly, well, monthly means 12 times per year. So 
So n is 12. Remember, n is the number of times per year that, you're, uh, uh, that you accrue interest. So our model is a equals 12,000 times 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 12, all raised to the power of 12t. So again, this is our general model. And again, it tells us how much our account is worth after t years. So here they would like us to find how much will the account be worth after 15 years. So we're substituting t with 15. So we say a equals 12,000 times 1 plus 0 0.02 divided by 12 all to the power of 12 times 15. Again, be very careful here with order of operations. Um, if you're doing this by hand, you would need to do inside the parentheses first, then raise it to this power, and then multiply it. But again, if you type it in exactly how you see it, and you're careful with grouping, so I'd also, you have to group this. Um, if you type it in just like this, your calculator will follow order of operation. So make sure you try it to see what you get. So you should get... Um, 16,194.26, we'll round to the nearest hundredths um, because it is money, so $16,194.26. So again, please make sure you have actually gone through and tried this in your scientific calculator. Um, it's, uh, I see a lot of really, really small mistakes with calculator input errors. So if you're not actually going through the process, you won't know if you're doing it wrong. So please make sure you're able to get the same exact answer that I do. Okay, so here I have one for you to try on your own. This is the last example for today's video. So please pause the video, give it a try. Um, it is important to try them on your own. Um, and then when you're ready to check your answers, you can hit play. All right, so let's take a look at the answers. Um, so first you have to determine which formula we're using. And since here um, it's simply increasing by 7% each year, that's a simple interest investment. So we use this formula. So P is 650, our initial uh, value, and R is 0.07, which is 7% as a decimal. Um, so this is our, our uh, model. And so we can um, change t, the number of years, and figure out how much the clock is now worth. So um, after three years, if you substitute t with three, um, you can see that our clock is worth this much. And if you uh, substitute t with five, we can see our clock is worth this much. For part b, we actually don't need to use Desmos for this part because it is a linear equation. Um, so here it says how long would it take for the value to reach 1,500. So in this case, we're actually substituting A with 1,500, and we're trying to solve for T. And we know that because it says how long would it take. Um, so here we're just simply isolating T, um, and we get approximately 18.68. So we could say that it takes about 19 years if we're rounding up to the nearest um, whole year. All right, uh, so that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.